Hello, and welcome back to the e-learning series on BSF BioWaste Processing. This module in the chapter of BSFL Post-Processing will focus on roasting BSF larvae in a drum. After watching this module, you will be able to describe the product quality of roasted BSF larvae. We'll understand the mass balance of roasting BSF larvae in a drum. You can apply the step-by-step -step process of roasting BSF larvae in a drum. We'll also recognize process control parameters and apply the procedures for data collections. Finally, you will be able to identify pros and cons of drying BSF larvae using a drum. Similar to the sand roasting technique, which we explained in the previous module, the BSF larvae can also be roasted in a drum. This is good when you have larger amount of BSF larvae, so it's a bit larger scale compared to the sand roasting technique. It's using the same machine as you would use for roasting coffee beans. The drum is heated by a gas burner and is insulated to prevent heat loss. An exhaust fan is removing the hot and steamy air. The drum is heated up and is constantly rotating. So larvae are in contact with the hot surface of the drum and are constantly flipped by a thin structure inside the drum. Due to these high temperatures, the water inside the larvae evaporates very fast and this results in this typical puffed and crispy BSF larvae. And therefore, we call the, these larvae also the pop larvae. The direct and intense heating with the burner causes the typical roasting induced color changes. So as you can see in this picture, the larvae are darker compared to the more gentle drying method, microwave drying. Dried larvae have all more or less similar nutritional, nutritional quality. However, the quality is influenced by the bio-waste type fed to the larvae, especially the fat content. Dried larvae mainly consist of protein and fat and each account for around 30 to 40%. In smaller amounts, they also contain fibers, ash and carbohydrates. Further, dried larvae have a low moisture content of around 3% and a water activity of 0.4. Therefore, dried larvae have become storable and have a shelf life of around 5 to 6 months if they are stored in a moisture tight package. A water activity of 0.4 prevents any bacteria or mold from growing. Here you see again the mass balance as introduced in the introduction video now detailed for the roasting in the coffee roaster. So for roasting, you heat up the drum by gas and for the rotation and the exhaust fan, you also need electricity. Then steam will leave the system by an exhaust fan. The exhaust fan is important to remove the moist air from the drum. Too much steam in the drum will prolong the drying time and it will result in moist and damp larvae. You add 5 kg in one batch and the drying takes approximately 30 minutes. The temperature is set at 140 degrees Celsius. Now we are quickly going to show you what type of material we are using in this operational video. We use, as mentioned before, a coffee roasting machine. This coffee roasting machine was produced locally in Surabaya, Indonesia. Then um, this coffee roaster has a built-in motor using 350 watt, an exhaust fan using 700 watt, and the volume of the drum is 0 0.46 cubic meter. The whole machine occupies a space of 1.2 square meter. Then we use a gas gallon for the burner, a bulk scale and heating gloves. For storing sanitized larvae as well as freshly dried larvae, during the operation we recommend using crates with the dimension 60 times 40 times 15 centimeters. Then for storing the dried larvae after they fully cool down, you will need an appropriate storage container that can be closed. You start the operation by attaching the gas gallon to the coffee roasting machine and switch on the main switch. By doing that, the control panel will automatically switch on. Then with the control panel, you can turn on the rotation, 
the exhaust fan and then the heating. Set the temperature to 140 degrees Celsius and preheat the drum while rotation and exhaust fan is already on. This is important as you don't want to heat only one part of the drum and you also need the fan to have air circulation. The exhaust fan can be fully open, closed or half open. You have a slider for that. We recommend leave the exhaust fan half open throughout the whole running time. When the drum reaches 140 degrees, you will see that by checking the control panel, you can add the larvae to the input funnel. Then open the slider directly below the funnel so the larvae fall into the heated drum. Then let the larvae roast for approximately 30 minutes. You will see that the temperature drops at the beginning to around 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. This is because the larvae are still wet and a lot of water that needs to evaporate first. And then as more and more water is evaporated, the temperature will start to raise again. And then the actual roasting process starts. You can check the process by pulling out the sample from time to time. And then you can check the indicators we already mentioned in the previous modules. Indicator 1 is that the larvae need to have this puffed shape. And indicator 2 is that the texture needs to be dry and crispy. You can best see that when you crush the larvae with your fingers and the larvae will break easily apart into fine crumbles. Then remove the larvae from the dryer by opening the front flap door. Leave the larvae to cool in a crate while you add a new batch of the larvae. Weight the dried larvae and note down the weight on the log sheet. In the end of the day, store all the produced larvae in a container that can be closed and label the container with production date. To keep track of the activity, fill in a log sheet. First, always fill in the date code of the harvested larvae as well as the larval weight. Always note down the weight of each batch of larvae going in the drum and then coming out of the drum. Also note down the total drying time. In the end of the activity, sum up the total mass in and the total mass out. These two numbers are then needed to calculate the yield, which is an important process control parameter. In your Excel spreadsheet, you can then calculate the yield, which is the total mass out divided by the total mass in times 100. The yield should be between 25 to 35%. Higher yields indicate that the larvae are not completely dry yet, and lower yields may indicate that you lost some material. Benefits of this operation are the larger batch sizes and therefore the higher throughput. The operation is simple and not as labor intensive as, for example, sand roasting. Therefore, also the operational costs are lower. The product texture is puffed and crispy, so the larvae look like the famous pop larvae. However, one downside is that the roasting induces um, color changes, and therefore the pop larvae are a bit darker compared to microwave dried larvae. Other downsides are that you need a higher initial investment and more space. Now we're almost at the end of this module and as usual we would like to ask you two questions. Question number one. You forgot to turn on the exhaust fan. What are the consequences? Moist air will accumulate inside the drum which prolongs the drying time and results in damp larvae. Question number two. You are not sure if your roasting process already finished. What can you check? When you roast in the drum, just check the texture of the pop larvae. If they fall easily apart when you crush them with your fingers, your process is done. Now we're already at the end of this module. We saw that drum roasting results also in pop larvae with darker colors. 
Drum roasting requires a rotating drum fitted with a thin structure, a good heat insulation, an exhaust fan and an efficient burner. Drum roasting requires a higher investment, but is less labor intensive. Thank you for watching this module, part of the e-learning video series on BSF bio-waste processing. More information can be found in the BSF step-by-step -step guide, which you can download through the QR code here. Both of these materials were part of the FORWARD project by EOAC, in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and funded by SECO, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs.